So we talked about viral, we talked about bacterial, and then now let's talk about fungal infections. A wrestler presents with a rash, and this rash is on his body, and it is non-itchy. However, on exam, you notice a uh, central clearing um, rash with raised borders. So a central clearing rash with raised borders. What is going to be the likely diagnosis? This is going to be tinea corpus, exactly. A wrestler, he has this kind of raised um, rash surrounding border, and this is going to be um, characteristic for tinea corpus, which affects the body. It is a superficial mycosis, and so what is the most common tinea infection? Tinea pedis, which is athlete's foot. A patient who presents with hair loss in a patchy distribution. He has multiple black dots in the occipital area, and areas of circular hair loss are seen on exam. How does the treatment of this etiology differ from tinea corpus? Well, the treatment for this etiology differs from tinea corpus because in tinea corpus, you can get away with topical therapy. However, what is the diagnosis here? This is going to be the tinea capitis. And for tinea capitis, as well as tinea unguinum, which is a fungal skin infection of the nail, you are going to have the oral and systemic therapy um, needed. So I really want you to know that you need oral and systemic therapy for tinea capitis and tinea unguinum. And so what is going to be the treatment? Either oral griseofulvin or oral terbenafine. How do I remember griseofulvin for tinea capitis? Well, greasy hair, greasy hair. Tinea capitis is going to be oral griseofulvin. What is griseofulvin? It's a microtubule formation inhibitor, has disulfiram reaction with um, teratogenic, and it induces SIP metabolism. These are key bullet points for griseofulvin. What does terbenafine do? Terbenafine blocks the synthesis of ergosterol. What is ergosterol? Well, it's important for the fungal cell membrane. And what it does specifically is terbenafine says, fine, I will inhibit squalene epoxidase, which is important for fungal cell membrane synthesis. So again, microtubule um, uh, uh, drugs, we talked about it. Griseofulvin is the point that I want to make. A patient presents after vacation to the dermatologist. It is noticed that her body, on her body, that there are patches of hypopigmentation and she is distraught that her whole body did not tan. KOH, which is po potassium hydroxide preparation, is positive. What is the likely morphology of this etiology on KOH preparation? Yeah, this is going to be what uh, diagnosis? Tinea versicolor. And so tinea versicolor has this spaghetti and meatballs appearance. Guys, how does tinea versicolor, how is that going to present on the USMLA? On vacation for tanning, but why does she still have these patches that are still there that are not tan? And that's related to the superficial uh, mycosis, tinea versicolor. The organism that you need to know is Malassezia fervor. And what is going to be the mechanism behind the hypopigmentation? Well, what this um, enzyme or what this bacteria does, or fungal etiology does, is it inhibits tyrosinase synthesis, uh, uh, the enzyme tyrosinase. And that tyrosinase is important in the synthesis of melanin. And particularly, DOPA goes to melanin, and that's um, what tyros uh, tyrosinase is going to catalyze. So the patient is given ketoconazole for treatment. And so what is going to be the mechanism of action of ketoconazole? Ketoconazole is going to inhibit ergosterol synthesis. And this is going to be the hypopigmented lesions that you're going to see in Malassezia fervor. So when we're talking about what to inhibit in terms of fungal uh, uh, cell membrane and fungal um, uh, uh, cell wall synthesis, let's go through this pathway. Squalene epoxidase is going to catalyze the reaction between squalene and lanesterol, and terbenafine is going to inhibit squalene epoxidase. That lanesterol to ergosterol uh, uh, is going to be the next portion of this track, and this, this conversion is going to be inhibited by all of your azoles. So fluconazole, for example, is going to um, uh, inhibit lanesterol to ergosterol synthesis. All in all, downstream, what these agents do is they inhibit the fungal cell membrane. The terbenafine blocks squalene epoxidase, and downstream, we have the azoles acting. An obese patient presents with skin fold hyperemia. 
there is white patches that are seen with, within the erythematous skin fold. So obese patient, now they have a lot of redness in these skin folds. What is the likely infectious etiology that is going on here? The likely infectious etiology is going to be candida. And what candida causes is intertrigo. Candida causes intertrigo, and basically what happens is, is that candida really likes these wet um, uh, environments, and people who have um, obesity can have increased amounts of uh, uh, intertrigo because of their fat rolls, essentially. Okay? So KOH is going to show pseudo hyphae as well as yeast. And so let's just synthesize all the candidal infections on the USMLA. Thrush in a diabetic or asthmatic on inhaled corticosteroids, that's going to be oral thrush related to candida. Vulvovaginitis in a female that has curd-like discharge and an increased amounts in their vaginal pH. Remember, vulvovaginitis um, uh, and curd-like discharge, that's uh, as, as nasty as that sounds, that's going to be candida um, uh, that is going to affect the reproductive tract. And then a diaper rash in a baby that has these satellite lesions. What are satellite lesions? Well, there are these small pinpoint lesions that are going to be on, um, that are going to represent candidal diaper infection, essentially. And so, to a pediatrician, that tells them to not only do zinc oxide cream for a diaper dermatitis, but add on some sort of fungal coverage because I see the uh, uh, satellite lesions. Esophagitis in a patient with HIV infection, remember the esophagitis um, is going to um, uh, cause, uh, is going to be caused by this uh, candida. So uh, watch for that presentation as well. An elderly male presents with forgetfulness and inability to balance his checkbooks. He has a tremor at rest and has a flat affect when he is answering questions. This is interesting. On exam, you notice a greasy appearing rash on his scalp. You note scales on the eyebrows and nasal creases as well. What is the likely diagnosis here? So what does this patient have? This patient is going to have subareic dermatitis. And the subareic dermatitis is caused by a fungal uh, uh, etiology, which is malassezia firmer, fervor. Remember that subareic dermatitis or subarea in general can cause cradle cap in newborns. And so what the treatment is, is selenium sulfide, okay? And this is how the rash is going to, um, rash is going to present. 